Thanks for joining us. We're back with the Fairy Podcast, which we are hard launching a new name. We are Soft Magnetics. Hard Topics. So this week we are going to be covering power. We've been talking a lot about suppression. So this topic is power. We're going to go with what makes a fairy a power fairy. So, yeah, we talked about in earlier episodes. And if you haven't watched those, check them out. Um, we talked about a lot about suppression ferrites, um, but power ferrites. So they're kind of the opposite of suppression ferrites, if you want to think of it like that. Power ferrites are designed to be efficient, mm -hmm. low loss, um, high reactants relative to their losses. Or suppression ferrites, you're looking for them to be deliberately lossy. Um, so they're they're kind of the uh, they're kind of the opposite. Okay. Okay. <laughs> kind of, sort of. <laughs> so how do you select a power material? So you have to look at what kind of application that you're going to be working on. And, you know, the application can vary, and that's kind of give you some of the secondary characteristics. If you're looking at something that's going on an airplane or, you know, what, that's going to dictate the temperatures you're looking for and things along those lines. But you got to look at what you're making out of the ferrite. So, you know, when we say power parts, we're talking kind of specifically about the form factors and the function of the parts being power. So that would be something like an inductor or a transformer. Um, so once you identified, you know, what kind of part, you know, what material properties are going to be relevant to that part. You know, transformers, you're looking at kind of coupling and, and permeability more so. Inductors, you may be looking at, um, you know, generally an inductance, so also permeability, but there might be a bigger component of losses in there. Um, yeah, it can vary around application to application. The big thing that you look at is going to be frequency, especially when you're talking about higher power parts. Um, the losses become very critical on these parts. So you look for uh, the material that's going to best suit your application by the frequency it's, it's working in. So the material losses for each material are not consistent over frequency. The losses at some point are going to increase. Each material kind of has a sweet spot, so to speak, where you want to use it. Um, and you can kind of delineate between low frequency materials, which would be stuff that covers up to four or 500 kilohertz, and high frequency materials um, that covers 500 kilohertz into the tens of megahertz range. Um, you know, the materials are kind of different between the two. Uh, permeability is going to be lower on the high frequency materials. Um, although nicely, most of the circuits are going to require lower permeability. Most of the devices will require lower permeability, those high frequencies. Um, so yeah, you want to look for, you know, simplest terms, the least lossy material mm -hmm. that has enough permeability for your application and frequency. So are there any materials that are both suppression and power? Yeah. Yeah. Some, uh, some materials can actually pull double duty. Um, as suppression materials and power materials. So, you know, a material that is just a suppression material is designed to be as lossy as it can be over as much frequency as it can be. Um, there wind up being some materials, um, some by chance, some by design, mm -hmm. that work pretty well for both. So below some certain frequency, they're going to be, relatively speaking, low loss uh, materials that are suitable for use in power applications. And above certain frequencies, they're going to be um, really lossy and great for suppression. So yeah, could be could be both. Mm. And do you, do you or us, <laughs> do we make the same types of products in power that we do suppression? Uh, not generally. <laughs> so there are some kind of weird ones. So, I mean, you want power parts or power materials in 
parts that make sense for power applications. So things like E cores and all those fun mated IEC geometries. Um, whereas suppression parts, you'd really want them to be in the form factor of a, you know, a cable suppression bead or a, a connector plate or surface mountable device. Now I'd say the exception to that is something like toroidal cores. Um, a lot of times toroidal cores will be used as transformers. They'll be used as inductors, um, but they also make great chokes. Mm -hmm. um, so they can be kind of used as both. Mm -hmm. So you'll find, um, you know, toroids aren't always used as power or suppression cores. And I think technically just from a paperwork standpoint, we consider them power cores. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they can be used as either. You want me to grab mm -hmm. this show the prop toroid? Show, show, our, show our friends. Look at that. That could be a choke or a transformer or both or an inductor. It's like all in one. That's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for covering the power stuff. You're welcome. Okay. Well, let us know what you want to hear next from our soft magnetics. Hard topics. Bye.